Welcome back. So after quite a few years in development, we now have a beta for Zorin OS 17. Zorin OS is a project that I've always held very near and dear to my heart. It's one of those fantastic polished end user experiences and it definitely tailors unashamedly to those who might be migrating over from Windows. It's been around for a long time and it continues to make some really helpful changes to entice people to try out Linux and run it on the daily. And I think there's nothing in Zorin OS 17 that goes against that uh, vision, I suppose. But the question, the fundamental question that I have to keep coming back to is with this release, with the timing of it, potentially when it's coming out, is it enough? So Zorin OS 17 beta. Well, all I'm gonna do in this video is kind of give first impressions. This is not a review because this isn't final and it's not stable and it's not fair, but I wanna go over what features they are announcing and some first impressions on that. But keep that fundamental question in the back of your mind, is it enough? So first up, Zorin OS 17, just the fundamentals, it is based on Ubuntu 22.04, which stipulates that we're running off an LTS release that came out in April of 2022. Now, this isn't a terrible thing in that ultimately this uh, kernel gets the hardware enablement stack from Ubuntu. So we're running the 6.2 uh, Linux kernel and there is a lot of work that gets put into the graphics stack of Zorin OS. Now, if you have a look here in the Synaptic Package Manager, you'll be able to have a look at what packages that this distribution packages for itself. By filtering by origin, you can see just how many repositories uh, the Zorin team package independently of Ubuntu to try and make the user experience for Zorin OS a little different from the mainline Ubuntu or even Linux Mint. So for example, they package their own special versions of the NVIDIA drivers. They have patches for a lot of the uh, core GNOME software. So a big difference between uh, Ubuntu 22.04 and Zorin OS 17 is that they use a lot of elements from GNOME 43 as opposed to 42 that came with Ubuntu 22.04. Uh, there is a bunch of uh, software here that is sort of in between different versions. So you can see how some of this stuff is version 43, some is version 42. All of that to say is that this project does take considerable time for them to stabilize a set of packages that achieve the goals that Zorin sets for it. Uh, so what's the end result of all of that? Well, it does mean that you do get a fairly customized experience that is distinct from Ubuntu 22.04. On its surface, I always get hesitant with Zorin's release schedule because of how spaced out it is and how distant it is from when Ubuntu originally came out. For a matter of comparison, I mean, Linux Mint does the same thing, although Linux Mint's tools and the way that they manage that still provides features and updates to keep this distribution, to keep Linux Mint feeling fresh. Uh, in the case of Zorin, the fact that it's coming out uh, you know, a year and a half, a year and nine months after the original LTS release and only four months away from the next LTS release does raise concerns in my mind, specifically around hardware enablement. Will this distribution be able to keep up with hardware drivers and more recent versions of the Linux kernel if the Ubuntu LTS release decides that the hardware enablement stack is done? Now, if all of that's gobbledygook, I'm sorry you had to sit through that, but it is a very legitimate concern from somebody who wants to be able to recommend this distribution to someone uh, who's using Linux for the first time. I want them to be able to have a fantastic first impression. I want their hardware to work out of the box and that's gonna rely on having up-to-date kernel and drivers. So I think Zorin does a great job at providing updated drivers. The question is, do they have the kernel and security patches and feature updates to increase uh, the stability and the compatibility of this distro moving forward. That's one of the biggest question marks that I have around this distro. However, let's talk about the stuff that makes Zorin Zorin. Uh, honestly, 
On first impression, with some of the features that they mention here, I think the biggest change is the fact that they've addressed the universal search issue in that when previously, when you would search in the menu, you would only be able to search for uh, specific applications and they weren't able to link in some of GNOME's search features. Now, obviously Zorin OS runs a customized version of GNOME Shell. Uh, while this is running GNOME 43 and bits of 42, uh, GNOME 40 series is fundamentally different from the 30 point X series. And so the horizontal uh, desktop layout is here and uh, the sort of the smoother edges, GTK4, all of that is here as well. Uh, it is worth mentioning that by default, I believe this distribution still uses the Wayland Display Manager like Ubuntu 22.04, uh, although I think it would switch if it was necessary. Uh, the universal search that is now built into the Zorin menu is far more capable than what we had in Zorin 16. It's also worth mentioning, and I know I'm kind of scattershot all over the place here, but it's also worth mentioning that the updater tool that Zorin has now to be able to directly upgrade Zorin OS in place is a huge quality of life upgrade so that people who have used previous versions of Zorin OS do not have to reinstall the entire system. They would just come into their system settings here and about and upgrade Zorin OS. So I think that's a fantastic addition. Now, when it comes to uh, multitasking, again, there are some changes that they have tried to make to make their current desktop paradigm work with uh, with the new GNOME shell. So if I was to open up a few windows here and then hit the multitasking button, you'll see them spread it out like it does with GNOME 40. And I have enabled the uh, desktop cube effect so that you can kind of flip between the different desktop, uh, the virtual desktops that you have available. But you'll notice that the task panel stays consistent and the search bar appears at the top. So again, slightly different to how GNOME operates, but it's consistent with how Zorin operates. And there's only fractional changes here to, uh, to how the desktop works. And I think the bulk of the work for Zorin OS 17 has been behind the scenes, making this desktop consistent with what Zorin has been, making it work with GTK4 and the GNOME 40 series. And, uh, and that means that speaking frankly, there's not a whole lot of like new showy stuff here that you can really um, get excited about. And while I think it makes it a difficult proposition for us Linux nerds to really get excited about, I think for the, the target audience, which is people who are migrating from Windows or who just want a system that works well in the desktop paradigm that they're used to, this still, I think, delivers. Maybe there's enough of a use case here, there's enough to convince people to be able to use a system that is effectively two or almost two years old at this point. So the spatial desktop or what they're calling the spatial desktop is uh, this idea of being able to have a workspace that can uh, jump in and out and, uh, and you can use the desktop rotating cube to switch between workspaces. You can also use a sort of a more cover flow uh, task manager. Instead of this pop-up alt tab switcher, you can by uh, switching the settings in Zorin appearance, by switching the spatial window switcher on, you can have a, uh, a more swooshy task switcher uh, which in my experience, at least here in a virtual machine is a little jittery and it doesn't really animate the way that it's supposed to on native hardware. It works a lot smoother. Uh, so I've left that one off and just relied on the traditional alt tab switcher, um, but it is there and it provides a fancy desktop environment, I guess. Again, it sort of feels a little gimmicky at this stage, but what isn't gimmicky is the fact that you have a uh, advanced window tiling extension now built into the Zorin desktop. So by using their customized uh, key bindings, uh, you can have a much more capable window tiler built in to the Zorin desktop. I believe that a lot of this work is based on uh, GNOME extensions that already existed. But again, it's just packaged into the Zorin appearance app along with their taskbar settings, desktop cube and other effects that you can enable or disable from here. And then you basically just benefit from all the benefits that come from GNOME being updated. So you get GNOME quick settings, 
you get a custom uh, screen capture uh, software, you get different power profiles from the quick settings, an updated or redesigned weather app, and they're also planning on adding before the final release two additional desktop layouts, uh, whether they are coming to the pro version or just to the standard version, I'm not really sure, but you can obviously quickly switch desktop layouts like you've always been able to do in Zorin. So if you wanna have a default GNOME desktop, you can with the usual uh, GNOME 40 layout. So here's my, here's my impressions, conclusions, and how I'll wrap things up. On the surface, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot that's changed between Zorin OS 16 and Zorin OS 17. I think there's been a monumental amount of change that's had to happen on the back end to support GTK4 and the GNOME 40 series and all of the other customizations that happened to the, this distro to make it work with more recent hardware, up-to-date graphics drivers, Mesa stack, and other patched software to kind of bridge the gap between how old the base version of this OS is and where software is at today. Now, can they continue and keep that process up over the life of Zorin OS 17? I think they've got a great track record. Both the Zorin 15 and 16 releases each got three point releases or service pack releases over the time of that distribution being current. And so I think they do have the, the, the ability to support this distribution moving forward. However, I still wonder, is it enough to convince new users to try out Zorin over some of the more uh, prominent Linux projects. Having said that, there's a lot of people in my comment section that love Zorin OS, especially on that Linux Mint video. They were sounding off about how much they love uh, Mint, but how much they prefer Zorin. So I definitely have used Zorin a lot in its time. I use Zorin OS 16 an awful lot in its first year of release. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I will be reserving my final judgment or review on this product when it comes out in its final polished form. Uh, so subscribe so that you don't miss that and I'll see you in the next one.